Welcome to my series on learning how to use 3D LUT Creator. This week we're going to take the information we learned in last week's video about what the CL grid actually represents, and I'm going to leave a link to that video above in case you'd like to review it, and we're going to use that information to make color changes to our photographs. If you're new to this series and you'd like to learn how to use 3D LUT Creator, I'm going to leave a link to the entire playlist up above as well. If you find content like this useful, I'd certainly appreciate your subscribing to the channel. But for right now, let's just jump right into the video. So today we're going to start using the information we went over in the last video to see how it could be applied to our images. If you'd like to review that first video on using the CL grid, I'm going to put a link to it above. Now we have two grids to work with, the AB grid and the CL grid. What should we use them for? Well, we saw that in the AB grid, we have great access to all the hues and also to saturation, but not as easy access to lightness. Meanwhile, back on the CL grid, we have very easy access to saturation and lightness, but hue, well, not so much. As we have seen, we can select what color we want to work on using the eyedropper. But then we only have access to these few colors, not all of them like we did on the AB grid. And once we work on these colors, if we use the eyedropper to try to work on another color by changing our slice, we'll start to get color shifts to our prior adjustments when we start working on the new slice. There is a way around that by doing something called compiling the LUT and loading it as an external LUT. That's a topic I'm going to cover in another video. So, what do we use each grid for? Here's the long and the short of it. The AB grid is best used for making color shifts and to some degree for making changes in saturation, while the CL grid is best used to make adjustments to the saturation and to the lightness of a color. So let's have a look at how we might do that. So now let's use the AB grid to make a major color change and take my blue shirt and we'll make it green. Now let's go back to the CL grid and see how we can fine tune the color. So the first thing we might want to do is take the eyedropper and run it over a general area of the shirt and click so that we can bring that specific color into one of the grids so we can make adjustments. And you can see that if I run the eyedropper over my shirt in the grid here, you can see with the X and the square where I might control that color. And also you can see that the white is indicative of all the greens in the picture, more specifically the greens in the shirt, and also some of the greens obviously out in the plants. So let's put the eyedropper back. And now we can fine tune. And so what we can do is let's choose those greens. I'm going to draw a marquee around those points. And I'm now going to use the arrows on my keyboard to move those points to the left and make my green shirt a more saturated green. Because remember, as we go out to the edge of the cake slice, we become more saturated. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with my arrows. And as you can see, we've made the greens more saturated. I'm going to turn the effect off and you can see the change in the green saturation. But wait, as our guy eyes gaze upward, what is going on with all this? What is going on with all this? My face is turning green. The hair is turning green. Everything is turning green. What is the problem here? Well, you can see that when we shifted all these points to the left, there was nothing pinned. So all these other points followed it, which means we were making changes in saturation to a lot of other points other than this. Well, how do we fix that? There's a very easy way. I'm going to reset this grid. And if you notice, there's two options up here. One is to pin all, 
which we'll get into in a minute. And the other is to pin the neutrals. You remember the very center is where the neutrals lie. So if I click on pin neutrals, you can see these squares become bigger. And now these squares, anything to the right of them, will not move. So let me select these greens again. And I'm now going to use my keyboard arrows once again to saturate the greens in my shirt. And now you can see the greens have become more saturated. But these neutrals and anything to the right of them have not moved. And thus, my face, which is neutral and has some magenta and probably a little yellow in there, has not changed color at all. And just to show you that, I'm going to turn, remember this is the button to turn the effect of the grid on and off. So here's with the adjustment, and I'm going to turn it off. And you can see the shirt becomes less saturated. But as I turn it on and off, you can see the color of my face and skin has not changed. And we no longer have this problem with everything else turning green. Now, let's say I want to change the lightness or the darkness of the shirt. Remember, lightness is upwards, darkness is downwards. I can use my arrows to make this green a lighter green, or I can use the down arrow to make this green a darker green. So before I explained uh, pin neutral, and I said I'd come back and explain pin all. So I've brought a new photograph here into 3D LUT Creator to explain that. And as I look at this, perhaps I want to adjust just these, just the yellows. These look a little bright. Maybe some of these yellows look a little bright. And I'd like to work on just a very discreet number of colors here in the yellows. So the way I'm going to do that first is let's take our eyedropper, go to these yellows here, and click so that the cake slice we're working on is right where we want it to be. We'll put the eyedropper back. Now, if I come up to pin all, what happens is, as you can see, and to unpin them, I just click again, but to pin all, you can see all the squares become larger and they were all pinned. And if you remember, that means that if I were to take any one square and move it, the neighbors would not follow along with it. And I can likewise choose multiple points and move them without the neighbors following along. So let's come down to these yellows. And by looking at the box, that white box, we can sort of see where our yellows are that are out here in this area. So let's just sort of draw a marquee around some of these yellows. And now I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to darken these yellows a bit. And you can see that these yellows, and all the yellows actually, that are of the same color, have become a little darker. I'm going to turn it on and off. And you can see those yellows changing. But what you don't see is the green changing, these neutrals changing. Everything is pinned except for these colors that I might want to move around. I want, might want to make them a little more saturated. Again, we're just choosing a small number of colors. So we can use pin all to make very fine adjustments to very specific colors that we might have in the image. Okay, I've reset the grid here because I wanted to take the opportunity to give you a few tips about using the CL grid. Because as opposed to the AB grid, which you can really go a bit crazy with and not get into problems, with the CL grid, you can induce banding if you go too far. So, to start with, unless you really want to make huge changes, I recommend that you come up and don't forget to pin your neutrals because then you're not going to make changes to colors that you don't want to make changes to. The other thing is that you don't want to take a point if you can avoid it and start crossing the lines of other points. 
that can sometimes get you into some trouble. So how do you avoid that? Well, the best way is if you're going to be trying to make big shifts like that is to choose a group of points. And then when you're making changes in groups of points, you can sort of go further without getting into trouble crossing a lot of lines. Well, here's one more tip. I will reset this grid. I'm going to pin all. And let's say there's a group of colors I know I want to work with. Say the yellows right here. Of course, there's other yellow similar to it in the in the photo, but we're going to choose these yellows and we can do so by coming up to this marquee tool and clicking on it. And what that does is if I draw a small marquee around the colors I want to work with, you'll see that it has automatically selected all the colors on both grids that are within that marquee. Now you can only work with one grid at a time and the colors are selected on this grid because you can see the white boxes. The boxes here are grayed out, but if I click on that grid, it switches over to the yellows here. And now, because everything else is pinned, I can just make direct changes to these colors with my keyboard arrows, and I can saturate those colors. I can make them darker, and I'm just affecting that group of colors that I chose with the marquee tool. And again, let me turn the effect off and on. Okay, I've reset the grid. And now let's have a look at how we might really use this to adjust a photo. So in Photoshop, I've opened up this picture of the Oregon dunes out near Florence, Oregon. And I'm going to go back to 3D LUT Creator. And let's bring that image in. We're going to hit Control N. Or we could have come down here and got it in the File menu. And we're going to start a new LUT. And we're going to bring the image from Photoshop into 3D LUT Creator. So let's look at what we have and what I'd like to do. So I'd like to spice up the sky by adding maybe saturating these blues a bit more and maybe darkening the sky a bit. And I'd like to add some more life to the sand by perhaps adding a little more contrast, brightening it a little bit. We could play around and see what we can get. So we definitely don't want to change the color of our clouds. So we're going to come here and pin the neutrals. And we can see, if we look at the colors, we can bet that these blues are going to be the sky, and this is going to be the sand. We can confirm that by running our cursor here across the sky, and you can see the white box is showing us the sky and the blues. And likewise in the sand, we're right where we thought we should be. All right then. So let's see where these blues are. Let's make a pretty wide selection of the blues. Oop. There we go. And I'm going to saturate the sky a little bit. And of course, saturation runs this way. So I'm going to use my keyboard arrows to do that. And let's darken the sky a bit. Maybe a slightly less saturated. And now let's come down to the sand here. And I'm going to try to add some contrast. And contrast, of course, is just making the lights lighter and the darks darker. So I'm going to choose some of these colors here that are lighter. And we're going to use the keyboard arrows and make them a bit brighter and perhaps saturate them a little bit by moving them to the right. Now we'll choose the rest of these colors here 
Make them a little darker by moving them down. Also saturate them a bit. And I think maybe making these light ones a little lighter. Maybe choosing a bit more so we don't go over too many lines. Whoop. There we go. And we've added a good amount of contrast within the sand. You can see here's lighter areas and darker areas. I'm going to turn the effect of the CL grid on and off. There's off. There's on. I've accentuated perhaps a little more than I would have just so it shows up in the video. Off and on. Now, let's say we wanted to change the color of the sand slightly. Again, we don't have good access to hue here, but we can come to the AB grid. And of course, this is going to be the sand. Or this spoke is the closest to it. And if we want to change the color of the sand a bit, we can add red to it. That's obviously way too much. We can add green to it. So let's take it and I'd say maybe saturate it a little bit more and perhaps make it slightly redder. Again, a subtle change. And we can take the blues in the sky. We can see those are mainly on this spoke. There's probably some on that spoke too. And we could add, make it perhaps a little more cyan as such. And now the effect of the AB grid, we can turn that on and off. And when we go back and turn it off, you can see there was a bit too much green in the sand. And we can turn it on. We've added a little more red, and we've changed the color, color of the sky a bit. We can then send that LUT to Photoshop. There we go. I actually don't have my layer stack there. Now I do. And here's our LUT. And we can see the total effect. That's how we started. This is what we have now. I'll probably turn it down a bit because, like I said, I accentuated a bit so it would show up in the video. We can turn the opacity down somewhat. I think that's probably a little better. And here's the change we've made in 3D LUT Creator. We've added a little more life to the sand and the sky. Well, we've covered a lot today, and now we know how to use two of the grids, the AB and the CL. If you find this content useful, I sure hope you'll subscribe and tune in next week for the next installment in this series. I hope to see you then.